Good to be back in church on Friday night. It's the weekend. And there'll be no weakness tonight. We have the guitar back again that we borrowed from our brother. And uh, we're going to do a song. And how many blues the guitar is in too? How many couldn't tell the difference anyway? Right. Here I go, wasting time tuning. Leave our play just like it is. Here's an old song. I like the old one. When I'm tossed on life's sea And the waves cover me And the dark clouds won't let the sun shine through There's a voice seems to say Child, there'll be a brighter day Don't allow the storm to hide sweet heaven's view Cause you've got one for valley, one more hill Maybe one more trial, one more tear. One more curve in life's road. Maybe one more mile to go. You can lay down your heavy load when you get home. And see your fear Learn to smile through your tears Hold your head up high And leave the world a smile You must be faithful all the way So it'll be worth it all someday For it's all gonna be over after a while Cause you've got one more valley One more hill Maybe one more cry, one more tear One more curve in life's road Maybe one more mile to go You can lay down your heavy load when you get home You can lay down your heavy load when you get home One more valley and one more hill. That means through all your ups and downs tonight, the Lord will be with you. He'll not fail you. Great things are in store for this evening. Oh, there's your God. Praise his name. I love him, don't you? Oh, there's your Jesus. Thank God forevermore. We'd like to mention that we have six of our albums with us. Uh, the last couple of meetings we've not had any, but we've got a new shipment from the record company. The best of the six is my wife Sylvia's album entitled Special Delivery. And it's thematic, as you can look at the picture on the front and see what the special delivery is all about. Identical twins were born on December the 14th in our family. And uh, they're pedaling around the house now in their walkers. It looks like a actual bumper car parade. Here's the one entitled Till the Lands with Two Winning Hands. That's the latest. Here's a great album called Storms Never Last. We also have I See a Bridge, Little House on Hallelujah Street, and In Short Beyond the Great. And uh, those are the singing albums that we have with us. And for some of you that are not uh, too musical and a little bit tone deaf, we have something for you that's probably more important to you anyhow. And that is an example and a sample of our Gifts of the Spirit seminar that was recorded in the month of June in the state of Virginia at Brother Kelly's church where the Virginia pastors had congregated, as many as who did attend. 
and there for 18 hours over a four-day period, each are a four-and-a-half-hour session, we talk non-stop on the subject of the operation of the nine gifts of the Spirit. How many believe that's an interesting subject to you? Now, there are 12 90-minute tapes, and uh, it's a $30 offering. One or two or three of you may have to go together to get it. I don't know. But it's a bargain because each of the tapes breaks down to be like two dollars and a quarter a tape. But it's uh, non-stop teaching on the subject of the gifts of the Spirit. Glory to God. And that is something we need to know a lot about. They are sort of time capsules and condensed statements and they're jam-packed. You have to play it a few times to let it all sink in. Just add water. It's a little dehydrated. Add water to it. It'll expand on you. Amen. And so after church tonight, the little Ellis girls will have both the music tapes and this one copy to look at. We're not selling this. This is the only one we brought with us. But we've had a shipment come to the house since I've been gone. And uh, we'll mail it to you if you order it. Leave your name and address. And uh, when we get home, as soon as we get home, we'll send it to you in the mail. How's that sound? Amen. Do you? Sometimes they leave the, uh, the money with us and uh, they trust us. And sometimes I've had to just mail it and trust them. Sometimes that's worked and sometimes it hasn't. And most of the time it comes in a month late. <laughs> they've only got their seminar. But tonight I think the girls would be happy to take both your address and your offering for the seminar. Well, are you happy? This may not sound scriptural, so if uh, we are waiting for Jesus at all, it's so that all the members of the family can be saved. Here the labor is so hard, and the workers are so tired, and our weary hearts are yearning for a rest. Then we find we're getting anxious to be in that happy land where there is such peace and happiness. So wait a little longer, please, Jesus. There are so many wandering out in sin. Just a little longer, please, Jesus. A few more days to get our loved ones in. The family scattered here and there, but Lord, we love them dear, and maybe we can help them find their way. And if waiting be the cause, that they should not be lost, then that's the only reason why we say, Wait a little longer, please, Jesus. There are so many wandering out in sin. Just a little longer, please, Jesus. A few more days to get our loved ones in. You give us one more time to get our loved ones in. Amen to God. Glory be to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And everyone said, even so, come, Lord, quickly. Make sure the family is saved and the circle is not broken before you come. Is that right? Well, it's a wonderful thing to be in church again. We don't want to prolong the music portion of this service because there are tremendous things that's going to happen otherwise in different categories this evening. Hey, Amen. I have the privilege to see Brother Green here tonight, Brother W.J. Green from Dayton, Ohio, who is with us and has been a real good friend of ours. And uh, helps us here in Ohio. We want him to stand up and greet us tonight. Uh, if he hadn't already, and besides, I haven't heard him if he has. So, Green. Oh, 
Well, we thank God for Brother Green and Randy, his son from Delaware, Ohio. Would you stand and greet us tonight, Randy? He's a reasonable facsimile, but not according to stature. Well, you all have a great stature before God tonight. If you'd like to be found in good standing with the Lord, stand upon your feet and let's praise Him for a whole minute's worth of worship as we change the order of tonight's service and go deeper. Go farther. Go beyond anything and everything that's happened tonight so far. Go ahead and worship and adore Him. Hallelujah, what a song. Oh, glory to God, glory be to God. Thank God. Blessed be the Lord from whom all blessings flow. Oh, praise him, all people here below. Oh, glory to God in the highest. We do praise thee. Thou art worthy this evening. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, O oh God. Glory to God forevermore, Lord, give us this bread. All bread of life come down from heaven and give life unto the world. Oh, may we now partake. Recobando ben dream si chile beon rosa cola bahatre. Hallelujah to Jesus, praising my Savior all the day long. Glory, glory, glory. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Oh, Lamb of Calvary. Glory to God on the highest. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed be my God. I love him. Glory. Glory be to God. All right, get frantic for the last 15 seconds. Let God hear you praise him. Turn up the volume. Hallelujah to God. Oh, hear me now, Jesus. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord of me. Let us exalt his name together. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered him from all of his trouble. Oh, glory, 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 glory to God. Wonderful, wonderful Jesus. Praising my Savior all the day long. Oh, yes now. Oh, yes, Lord. Well, I'm happy. While you're standing still, that is still standing, In Second Peter tonight, I want to read seven verses. If that seems too long to read for a text. You may read it with me. Beginning in the fourth verse, there's a very interesting subject that we want to deal with for a little while tonight. God will take this word and confirm it supernaturally if you believe it. It is his word. Amen. Give me a little volume back in the booth. Just a little volume and I'll... Work it down here so I won't strip gears. Amen. In my throat. Now we're ready. Second Peter chapter one. Verse four. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now you know how corruption gets in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, here comes a great additional table. Anybody able to add here tonight? Here's the additional table. Add to your faith, everybody say faith, virtue, say virtue. And to your virtue, knowledge, say knowledge. And to knowledge, temperance, say temperance. And to temperance, patience, say patience. And to patience, godliness, say godliness. Are you still adding up? And to godliness, brotherly kindness, say brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity, say charity. For these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, you don't want to be barren. You don't want to be unfruitful, particularly in the subject and in the area of knowledge, revelation, knowing more about Jesus and knowing, in other words, what Jesus knows. I believe he can let you know what he knows. After all, it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. The hope of glory. All right? 
that he, but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off. Sometimes we need to see afar in and sometimes afar off. Hallelujah. And have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. He's blind, he can't see afar off, and he's forgotten where he come from. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to making your calling and election sure. I'm as glad you called. I'm as glad you've been elected. If you've been elected, you've won. You've won the election. I don't care who's campaigning against you. I don't care who's against you. If you've been elected, you've already won. Is that right? Hallelujah to God. All right. Give diligence to your calling and election because this is the kicker. And I want you to really memorize this last sentence. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. People are falling on every hand, on the left and on the right. And people you never expect to fall have fallen, and you'll never fall if you do these things. So all you've got to do is simply know how to add tonight. You can ensure your steps and footing so that you'll never fall. Hallelujah. All right. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want an abundant entrance tonight into the everlasting kingdom. Lord, I thank you for the reading of the word. Let it be rich and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Pierce now to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and be a discerner tonight of the thoughts and the intents of every heart that is lodged and represented here this evening. I thank you, Lord, for great victory. And everybody said I got great victory. God bless you, seated you may be. Wherefore, there has been given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Every promise in the book is mine, every chapter, every verse, and every line. The promises of God are yea and amen to him that will believe. Will you believe? Ah, oh, yea and amen. Now, the promise is unto you and unto your children, unto your children's children, and as many as were far off, as many as whom the Lord our God shall call. That means whosoever will may come. Free enterprise system, up for grabs. Not fussy who he uses, just show up and punch the clock. I think God can use you. He can do more in two seconds than you can do in a lifetime. You can work all your life and build yourself a shack, or you could get out of God's way and he'd build you a mansion. You'll get out of the meeting what you put into the meeting, of course. If you're not worth anything, you won't get anything. But if you're working tonight, he'll pay you exactly what you're worth. He's a very good paymaster. Oh, glory. Lend your faith, your virtue, your knowledge, your temperance, your patience, your godliness, your brotherly kindness, and your charity to this meeting tonight. And what you're worth, you will be uh, doled out and awarded that particular credit unit from heaven. Or you see, you are to buy the truth and sell it not. God has things for sale. Buy of me, you Laodiceans, gold tried in the fire. You want to buy a few pounds of fire tried gold tonight? How are you going to buy it if you don't have any credit units, if you don't have any buying power, if you don't have any uh, uh, thing promised to you in exchange for your work, energy, and effort? See that? You don't work all week at the factory and forget to pick up your check on Friday. And you don't go through this whole meeting tonight and walk home without your miracle either. That's your check on Friday, and it is Friday. Say hallelujah. Well, thank you, Jesus. So I say tonight that he told this church age to buy of him white raiment, that the shame of your nakedness not appear. And how many like to buy a few rolls and bolts of white raiment? Fine linen is the righteousness of the saints tonight. And again, he says, buy of me, I salve, and anoint your eyes. Oh, it's time to no longer be blind. It's time to see you far off. It's time to uh, see where you come from and see where you're going to. It's time to know the door that's set before you, knowing enough to walk through it with a backbone instead of a wishbone. God wants you to buy a few things, and you cannot buy it of dollars and cents. 
You cannot buy your healing with money. You can only buy it with the purchasing power that you earn by working for God in this meeting tonight. Ah, uh, get your shoulder to the wheel. Hallelujah. Don't you love him? Hallelujah to God. Now, Peter has put forth an additional table here. And every time he adds something to it, why, he adds something else. And God wants to add to you something that you've never had before tonight. A level that you've never attained. You cannot live in a rut. Anything that don't grow is going to die. First it's rented, then it's stunted, then it dies, it drops dead. Everything has to grow to live, and there's nothing that is more stenchful than a dead ministry. Every person saved tonight has a ministry. You are required before God in order to keep your salvation to preach or to teach or to witness. You have no choice but to give away what you've already got so that you may attain more that is fresh. It has to flow. It is not the hoarding principle of going into the closet and pray, 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 store up, store up, store up, store up, come out and lay hands on heads until your storage battery runs down. It is the giving principle or the emptying out principle, being a channel, being a conduit, being a pipe, being a, a course by which God can flow through. Hook into the source, reach out to the need, and flow forever. You won't have to uh, pray for a certain number of hours that you may pray for a certain number of people. You can hook into the source by being a channel instead of being a storage battery. Storage batteries run down. But pipes flow as long as there's a source of supply. And don't worry, this source of supply will never be exhausted. God is almighty, he's the keep of Israel. that neither slumber nor sleep tonight. He never gets tired, so he don't have to sleep. I get tired. I've been tired today. I answered the telephone all day long, all morning and all afternoon. It seemed like I've been on the telephone. I don't know how they found me. Hallelujah. I get tired sometimes of praying for people, but he never gets tired of healing them and setting them free and giving them the miraculous. Oh, at evening time when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were sick and oppressed and afflicted, and he healed them all. Well, I believe it's for the all tonight. He's able to do all things well, making make him both the blind to see and the deaf to hear. Who forgiveth all your iniquities and who healeth all your diseases. This is not a portion of God. He's an all in all God. Oh, so there are exceeding great and precious promises today. How many wants to claim a promise? If I can find you a promise in the Bible, it's yours if you have a mind to claim it. If I can't find it in the Word, you can't have it. But if I can find it there, you can have it. The Syrophoenician woman who came to Jesus' meeting for five nights in a row finally got in the family. When he called her a dog, she shouted, Hot diggity dog, I'm a dog. I've been trying to get in the family for five nights. I finally made it. I'm only the family dog, but I'm in. Now that I'm in, I intend to claim a dog's right. Now that I know who I am, interestingly enough, you're not who you think you are. You are exactly what he says you are. And when you are willing to abide by the will of God, you've got two wills lined up. Then God can do something. You'll never force anything on you against your will. This is why we have perverts and reprobates today whose will is twisted who cannot be delivered. A portion of them can if they have not go, gone beyond the point of no return or beyond the point of where their will cannot be changed. But people love what they do and they like what they do and they don't want to stop what they do and they make justification for what they do under every adverse circumstance. And their will has not lined up with the will of God. Until it does, you won't receive a miracle, and you will not receive deliverance. You've got to agree with God. Hallelujah. But when a man or woman's mind is twisted to the point where the will is changed, you cannot receive anything against your will. So instead of sitting back there tonight praying, Oh God, oh God, oh God, don't let that preacher pray for me. Don't let him pray for me. Don't let him pray for me. Change your prayer. Change your will. While you can still... Operate your own will and say, oh, send him on down here to pray for me. Hallelujah. God will answer whatever you pray tonight. You can claim the promise, and that's what's going to happen. I was praying for a man in North Carolina one time, and he said, oh, don't pray for me, Brother Freddie. I don't need anything. I'm fine. I don't need prayer. I don't uh, uh, want anything, don't need anything. Instantly, I discerned he had the wrong spirit. 
Because the right spirit would have said, hey, I need all the prayers of all of God's people, and I might just make it. Hallelujah. They're exceeding promises. That means God is able to do exceeding and abundantly above anything you could ever ask or think here tonight. They're precious promises. The world never give it. The world can't take it. The world can't do it. Doctors all over Ohio wish to God they could do what's been happening here the last two nights. Just think if they could do it, what a killing they'd make off of you. If we had the money that some people had spent down at the chiropractor's office, if we had it in the offering, couldn't we do more missionary work and heal more heathens and convert more folks who can only be convinced by the power of the demonstration? Amen. But see, in church it's different. People don't have to give to God. But Jesus said when they haul you to the judge and to the jail and to the uh, inner most uh, complicated establishment, you will not escape until you pay the very last farthing. Hmm? You won't get out of the hospital until you pay the last farthing. In fact, you won't get in the ho hospital unless you guarantee the very last farthing. Say amen. I say it's the fault of the church for not offering the Society of America a viable alternative to going to the surgeon's scalpel, going to the hospital bed, going through operations and surgery. It's our fault for giving the medical world the monopoly over the human body. Whenever anyone gets a monopoly, well, then they'll charge you all, get out, and they'll own you lock, stock, and barrel body, soul, and spirit. You spend your life paying them back and never be free from what man has done to you. No wonder David cries, let me fall into the hand of God. For his mercies are great, but let me not fall into the hand of man. Zip. Hallelujah. I say tonight, if there's an alternative and people know there's another way to be healed besides go under the knife, guaranteed the prices at the hospitals will come down. Guaranteed they'll be looking for business. Guaranteed they'll be looking up your name and address wondering what new piece of real estate they need to buy and what guinea pig to operate on so they can buy it. Say hallelujah. I say tonight it's up to the church to be apostolic and quit talking about it and start doing it. Hallelujah to God. Well, I'm happy. Exceeding great and precious promises, Peter said. And uh, if you will claim the promise of God tonight, it'll make you a partaker of the divine nature. Don't you want to be a partaker of the divine nature? When you begin to exercise the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, and the discerning of spirits, these are the three gifts that help you to think like God. When you exercise the gift of faith and the gift of healing and the work of the miracles, these are the three gifts that help you to act like God. When you exercise the gift of tongues, the interpretation of tongues, and prophecy, these are the three that help you to talk like God. Now, when you think like him and act like him and talk like him, the devil better look out because his goose is cooked. It's all over but the crying. He does not want to have to come and check out this meeting tonight. He does not want that assignment, believe me. He's cringing outside the building with his knees knocking together, scared to death of what God's going to do in the place this evening, while a few folks nodding at you are not necessarily agreeing with you. Don't think the devil don't know what's going on here if you don't. Say hallelujah. Aren't you listening? Glory, the divine nature, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Thinking like him, acting like him, talking like him. Why, that's the divine nature. Don't you want to be a partaker of the divine nature? What a great, precious, exceeding promise, exceeding anything you could ever imagine. If God can't do exceeding above what you can think of, well, then you could be God. But he's greater than you, and the thing formed cannot say to the thing that formed it, why hast thou made me thus? The creator is greater than creation. Potter has the power over the clay. So he's the way ahead of you. We've got people looking back. The good old days. Oh, the good old days. What's wrong with you? Don't you know God is not behind you? He's ahead of you. He's so far ahead of you that he exceeds you in every promise, and you better shake a leg and hurry up and catch up. Say hallelujah. Oh, I love him, don't you? By partaking of the divine nature, you will escape the corruption that is in this world. And anything that is divine is contrary to corruption. Anything divine, like divine healing, can remove corruption. 
can take the rock and the mass and the mess and the uh, cantankerous, uh, cankerous suffering and affliction, sickness, disease, and infirmity from you. Divine nature is diametrically opposed to corruption that's in this world. Oh, hallelujah. Satan and his crowd are corrupt. He's a liar, the father of it. But don't you worry about get, getting in the wrong spirit here tonight. Don't worry about leaving yourself wide open and getting a demon, because you won't. You can't ask for bread and get stoned. You cannot ask for fish and get a serpent. You cannot ask for uh, any such thing as with what is positive and wind up with something negative. Hallelujah. Oh, thank God. I love him. Ooh, glory. Glory. You cannot ask for fish and get anything but a fish. I'm looking to get bread. I'm looking to get a fish here tonight. I'm looking for just exactly what I asked for. It's a little bit exceedingly more than what you might be used to asking for, but let's go for it. Get the divine nature in us because that takes out the corruption that's in the world. Now, corruption comes in this world through lust. L-O-U-S-T. And the little message I'm preaching, and I perceive that I will not preach it too long tonight because of the many names that are here. The message is entitled, The Journey from Lust to Love. We have a world out there that is bound up of corruption. And the reason it's so corrupt is because it's full of lust. Lust is a selfish thing. Lust is something that uh, pertains to self and gratifies self and only uh, uses people. It works against people. It has no love in its heart. It has no consideration for anything but its own promotion and progress and attainment and uh, fulfillment, which is not fulfillment because lust continues to uh, foment more lust and more and more because time changes things. Time is always moving. And because of time, nothing stays the same. And no thrill stays the same. No uh, great experience stays the same. While you are experiencing the so-called thrill, it is yet dying. It is yet fading. It is yet disappearing. It is yet temporary. It is yet over. It is yet soon to be through. And you're groping, trying to relive the moment, and you cannot because time is changing things. Only eternity changes nothing. Time changes things. If you don't believe time changes things, go look in the photo album and then go look in the mirror. Look at how Columbus has changed in the last 50 years. Time is changing it. There's one place where things never change, and that's eternity. So when you enter that world, you must enter prepared. Once you're there, you'll be safe if you're saved. You never backslide no more once you leave the body saved. You never lose that with God. If you enter that world in sin, you cannot hope to get out of that sin because there's no change in eternity. As a tree leaneth, so shall it fall. As a tree falleth, so shall it lay. We are now preparing our spirits to where its direction shall be guided once out of the body. We're preparing now for what direction we're going in. You understand that? If you hate corruption, you hate sin and the vices of this world, you will also hate it once you get out of your body. And it will repel you, and you will resist it, and you will uh, be magnetically opposed to it until you begin to be guided and taken into the realm of higher learning and higher light and higher glory called the glory world of heaven where you've been preparing yourself to go. When you leave your body, you see it's the same old you. It's not a brand new you. It's the same old you. It's not the carcass at all. When you peel this old banana skin off, that's nothing. The same old you that's sitting here is the same old you that's going to leave the body. And Paul will say this. He'll say, whether in the body I cannot tell, out of the body I cannot tell, but I was caught up into the third heaven. Oh, three times he said it in the passage because he was confounded by the reality of the fact that he was out of the body and couldn't tell it, couldn't know it, couldn't uh, understand it. He couldn't explain it. He knew that he was still him. He went to the third heaven, but flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. If you go to the third heaven, paradise, glory, heaven, why, you have to leave the carcass behind. But he went. How did he go with all his intelligence and all his senses and all his being? And yet his body didn't go. Because he said, I couldn't tell whether I was in the body or out of the body. I couldn't tell whether I was in it or out of it. I couldn't tell whether I was in it or out of it. Three times in a row he is confounded by the fact that once out of the body, two seconds after you kick the bucket, you're not even going to know you died. Your 
luckily I'm playing on the bed and you standing in the room with all your faculties. Flying. Light as a feather. Nobody can see you. Nobody can hear you except the folks that's in the same world you're in. Time changes things, but eternity changes nothing. Once in eternity, it's forever the same, forever more. So your lusts down here are too temporary. They change. It's gone. You cannot relive it. You struggle for a long period of time to relive a moment that does not last. Say hallelujah. Now, I want to take you on a little journey quickly through an additional table. We can solve your lust problems tonight. I'm going to want your lust problem solved. Well, I didn't expect too many hands to raise. But they're here. Or God would not have given me this message. Say amen. Now, the corruption that's in the world is here because of L-U-S-T, which is a uh, malformed version of L-O-V-E. Now, here's one test between lust and love. Lust is selfish, but love prefers the other. Love honors your brother. Love does not do despite. Love or charity. Charity is love, right? Charity. If I give my body to be burned, it's no good if I don't have love. If I understand all mysteries, I'll announce the good if I don't love you. Why, I could uh, uh, be sawn asunder, bound in chains, do everything possible, just confound you, but if I didn't love you, it would all be in vain because love is the more perfect way. Charity suffers long, is not proud, is not... Uh, uh, does not bond itself up and prefers the other. When consideration comes from you to somebody else, you're well on your way out of lust into love. When you're trying to gratify yourself at the expense of all other people, then you might still be in the corruption in the world called lust. Hallelujah. Now, we all know what lust is. Let's not dwell on it. We're positive preachers and not negative. If you happen to have a negative, we'll simply cast that out of you and become more positive here tonight. Wondering why the preacher bends his ear, he still is listening for a response. Amen, oh me, oh my. One of them will pitch you. Microphone's still portable. We can still come down and pick out the quiet spot. Please. No cord on the microphone means nobody in the building can escape us this evening. Be prepared for anything. Add, because of corruption in the world through life, add on to your faith. Oh, we've got to get faith. Faith is crucial. Now, last night we preached before faith cometh, and after faith cometh, and we talked about the temple of Solomon, of how impossible it was to get to God under the Jewish legalistic hair-splitting law. Legalists do not get the Holy Ghost. Legalists cannot work miracles. He that received the Spirit, did he receive it, said Paul in Galatians, by the works of the law or the hearing of faith? He that worketh miracles among you, did he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? So faith comes comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Some of you may be enduring the preaching tonight, but try to be enjoying the preaching. This word of God is what's bringing faith. This word of God is the only thing God can confirm supernaturally with signs and wonders and miracles. He cannot confirm time and life and Newsweek magazine and the Reader's Digest. Oh, thank God. It was the outer court of the Gentiles. Beyond that, only Jews could go to the sacred enclosure. Beyond that, only the women could go to the treasury or the court of the women. Beyond that, a few, uh, few feet higher, every tier was a little bit higher in Solomon's temple. Beyond that was the court of Israel. Only Jewish males could go. Beyond the court of Israel was the court of the priests. Only priests could go. Beyond the court of the priests was the house of God where only a few priests could go to the holy place and only one priest could go to the holy of holies once a year. I would say to get the Shekinah glory of God flowing between the cherubims, between your rib cages. All oh, that glowing, flowing taper. If you went it, at it legalistically, you might never make it. One man might have access to it one time in a whole year. That's not the kind of God I want to serve. There's five billion people on the face of the earth, and I don't want to be left out of an exceeding precious promise tonight. I want to be a partaker of that divine nature tonight. I want to escape the corruption of the world, which is through lust, and if I'm going to do it, I've got to get faith and not legalistic works to be my answer and solution. Now I thank God for faith. Everybody knows that faith is believing God. Faith is substance. Faith is evidence. There's nothing there but you believe, 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 and suddenly here comes the evidence. Suddenly out of the invisible realm of the Spirit comes the substance. Now you need organs in your body tonight? Simple. God is the Spirit. And God's 
very essence and presence, which is spiritual, is in this place. He's everywhere present and nowhere is absent. God is Father, God is Spirit, God is here. He made you. He created you. Every cell in your body was multiplied at the point of conception. Your cells are being multiplied right now in a natural sense by a natural law that he's put in your body while you're dying on the bench listening to me. God is recreating your cells. And those dying ones are replaced every moment. Is it little wonder that he can speed up the process if you get in the spirit where there is no distance of time, gravity, or speed? Hallelujah. Amen? Now, new organs can come. Out of the presence of God tonight, the Creator, He who created you the first time can recreate you the second time. He can add to you, uh, produce more within you. Out of the presence of God, if you believe Him, for without faith it is impossible to please Him. You can't get Him to do anything unless you get Him pleased first. Get Him in a pleasurable mood, please. Out of that invisible spirit comes molecules, atoms. Cells, electrons, protons, neutrons, matter. Everybody say matter. It will emerge out of the supernatural realm of God Himself who is here if you believe Him for it. That's faith bringing a substance. That's faith bringing an evidence. But there's nothing there. I know that there's no facts yet. I know there's no proof yet. But who cares? We're on the faith subject now. Faith is before the fact. You've got to believe first, and then God will show you. Don't wait for God to show you so you've got something to believe for. The walls of Jericho did not fall, so they had something to shout about. They had a shout first, and then the walls fell down. Faith comes before the fact. Everybody's got 20-20 hindsight. We need foresight and insight. Before anything happens, we want to believe God. But there are people that will... Uh, this is the true test, you see, to believe before anything happens. There are people that will give to God as long as they found out they was healed and received a great miracle. They give the same old George Washington, the major supporter of Pentecostal Church, before they are healed or before anything happens to them. You see, their faith breaks down before the fact. Have uh, faith before the fact, and then you have great and exceeding and precious promises that will be your portion tonight. Hallelujah. Is it right? Are you happy? Whoa, glory be to God. So, faith. Will bring out of God what you need. Add to this faith. If you already got some faith, then you must have some because we preached for a few minutes. Faith coming by hearing. That's why God has special mercy on the deaf. He has to open their ears so they can hear. So that they can have faith. Say so, amen. Hallelujah to God. Faith comes by hearing. Virtue. Do you want to feel some virtue here today? The woman that touched the hem of his garment felt virtue. And she was healed of her cancer after 12 years. She had 12-year-old death, one drop of body, blood left in her body, and she had suffered many things at the hands of many doctors. Neither could be healed of any. They took all her money. She was penniless. She was bloodless. She was a dying. She tried her last effort to get a hold of some virtue. And if you have a little faith, then you have to add to it right now virtue. So start becoming virtuous. I would like to be virtuous. How do I do it, preacher? By getting some virtue out of the hem of his garment. Touch him as he passes by. Reach out and touch the Lord even now. Virtue will make you virtuous. Hallelujah. Oh, thank God. Who touched me? Everybody touched you. This touch was different. It was a touch of virtue. A touch of faith creates virtue. You must add virtue now to your faith. Oh, you do want to get out of your lust and enter into great love. How many would like to start loving for a change? Love is the most strong, powerful thing. And there's a route and a pattern to follow to get out of lust and start becoming uh, one who has love. And it is this. Virtue has got to accompany your faith. And it's being added right now. I perceive it. She had 12-year-old death, and she touched him while Jesus was on his way to Jairus' house to again raise 12-year-old death. Thought was 12 years old, and she was dead. They were both 12 year old deaf because the death in this cancerous body of this woman for the issue of blood had had it 12 years. Now, as far as I'm concerned, 12 year old death is 12 year old death. One case is really no more complicated to God than another, but how much more is He able to 
do the same case twice, proving that he did it the first time, shows he can do it the second time. If he ever did it once, he can do it again. If he ever healed a blind eye once, he can do it again tonight. He has established the precedent the first time he did it. Now, there's a difference in 12-year-old death as far as who touches who. Now, the woman was touching Jesus' garment for virtue en route to Jairus' house. What does that mean? That means that she got her miracle long before Jairus' daughter got her miracle. What does that mean? That means that when you touch Jesus, you are liable to get something a whole lot quicker than laying back there waiting for Jesus to come to your pew and touch you. You see the difference? It's a question of touching or being touched. I know all of you are going to be touched by God tonight, and you're determined to wait there until he does it. You probably will be touched at the very tail end of the service. Right about at the last day, man, you'll get your miracle. Why would you suffer all night long through this whole meeting in this great congregation when it's in your power to claim exceeding great precious promises by touching him? You touch Jesus and receive it a whole lot quicker than waiting for Jesus to touch you. Well, now, here I am, you lucky people. Lord, do whatever you got to do to get me out of this chair. Do whatever you got to do to get out of it. Get up and touch him. I'm waiting for God to touch me. Well, why don't you touch God? Twelve-year-old death is twelve-year-old death, and the woman of the issue was delivered long before Jairus' daughter ever came off the deathbed. Amen. Understand? Virtue, I say. Add to your virtue knowledge. Wouldn't you like to have knowledge? Well, you see, even in supernatural knowledge, Jesus' whole ministry was based upon knowledge, revelation. He knew everything he was going to do ahead of time before he ever did it. I don't have time to preach on that particular subject, except in every instance, he never got boxed or trapped or hung or uh, defeated because he knew everything that was going to happen before it happened. So he knew what to say, like he knew his script memorized uh, and practiced many times before the final uh, presentation. Hallelujah. Jesus knowing their hearts. Jesus perceiving their thoughts. Jesus knowing what lay in man. Jesus reading their minds, the Bible might just as well have said. He knew how it was going to turn out before it ever turned out. That's knowledge. If you want to believe God tonight, then become virtuous by touching him. And after your virtue, look for some knowledge because you're on your journey out of lust and into love. Glory to God. There's only one journey that will guarantee it because I found scriptural text tonight for it. I located it on your behalf. So for goodness sakes, claim it and receive it. Because it's high time you start to love it. And it's sure high time you stop lusting. Over the dog. Knowledge. Add to your knowledge temperance. Now temperance is the middle of the road. It is balance. I believe, I firmly believe that the word balance is the major, number one, most important word in the English language. Balance. Everybody say balance. You're not a fanatic, you're not an extremist when you're balanced. I believe I'm both, but I don't believe I'm reckless. I believe there's a ditch on this side of the highway called formalism. I believe there's a ditch on this side of the highway called fanaticism. I believe the, in the middle of the road, there's a line to walk. I believe the middle of the road is always highest in the center. Check it on your way home. That means every time it gets dirty, a good rain comes along, it washes it off, and guess where all the debris goes? Into the ditch of formalism or fanaticism. Don't you want to stand on higher ground? Then get yourself in the middle of the road here tonight and get balanced, and temperance is a fruit of the Spirit. You have to add temperance on to your knowledge. You can know ever so much, and it wouldn't do you an ounce of good if you didn't know what to do about it. Hey. Classic example. Old Sister Jones, back there in the back of the tent, has a bad heart. Word of knowledge, supernatural revelation of natural things from the physical world. Not to me now, so good, or anyone else now, so good to know it, unless we know what to do about it and can do something about it. Now, what do we do about it? Enter the next gift of the Spirit, the Word of Wisdom. How to apply, or what to do in a given situation. Shall we have her lay prostrate on the floor? Shall she fast three days? Shall she go see the doctor? Should she stand up and receive? Should she get a spoken word? Should she run around the tent seven times? 
replying now something to your knowledge, connecting it to old Sister Jones's action, that she may respond to the forthcoming miracle. Let us say, in the hypothetical case, that she is supposed to run around the tent seven times, okay? There she goes. Doctors who said, whatever you do, take 17 pills, lay home in bed, and don't breathe, and whatever you do, don't go to those holy roller meetings. If the doctor had seen her running around the tent, he'd have had a heart attack himself. But there she goes, a chugging and a plugging and a huffing and a puffing, and all of a sudden, the working of miracles puts her. Boing! It catches up with her. Well, you see, you cannot divorce or separate one gift from another. They dovetail and they're interwoven. You have to uh, have the Word of God to finally decree and discern between joints and marrow and body and spirit. So, so now three gifts have happened. Word of knowledge, bad heart. Word of wisdom, run around the tent. Work of the miracles, instantaneous new heart, healed. She may have been also, in a hypothetical case, crippled in the leg, and uh, God started to restore the leg while she was running, and it was progressively restoring, so therefore it was not a miracle but a healing. There's four gifts already operating in the meeting. Gift number five. Uh, while you were praying for her, you discerned that she had a lying spirit, or she gossiped on the telephone every day. Lying for the glory of God. Stretching the truth for God's glory of the truth of God abounds through my lies, said Paul. Why am I yet judged a sinner? Well, it wasn't in her soul, particularly in this case, discerning of spirits, which is another gift of the Spirit, said it's only upon her. It attacks her. It oppresses her flesh from the outside. There is a difference between oppression and possession. There's a difference between your soul and your body. Your body is corrupt. It's of lust. Corruption in the world is uh, because of lust. Your body is going to the grave, it's dying daily, it's going to perish. Your body is not redeemed. Now, when you get a glorified body like Jesus had when he came out of the tomb, come up and show me and say, Brother Freddie, you see, my body's redeemed now. And I'll say, Amen, you're right, it is. You used to have a problem with preachers who preach that doctrine of eternal life in the place. If you don't remember that, you're too young. The only problem with the doctrine of eternal life in the flesh was that all the preachers that preached it are now dead. Are you listening? I submit to you tonight that the only part of you right now at the present moment that's redeemed is your soul. The inner man, the real you. Now that the devil cannot touch if you're saved, but many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers him out of the all. When you get a glorified body, you won't have to worry about afflictions, nor lust, nor anything else. There's two of you, you see. Come to this. Stay beyond body, soul, and spirit. Well, when your body dies, rest assured, two of you will not be leaving your body. Only one of you will be going. And you figure that out. All thank God for the eternal soul of man that's redeemed. The body is not redeemed yet. Are you listening? Are you enjoying this? Now the the discerning of spirits that old sister Jones as this lying spirit is not in her spirit or so it is upon her that influences her it buffets her from the outside and hence I which have already operated hmm? now gift number six could have operated in the hypothetical case and you could have said in the future sister Jones in three days the doctor will call you and he will examine you and find by x-ray that you have a new heart. That's future, that's prophecy. History written in advance. Now you've had all six of the knowing and power gifts operate in Sister Jones's case. The only thing that hadn't operated yet was tongues and interpretation. That gift of faith had to have operated because Sister Jones had to get up and respond to it. She had to be willing to run around the tent seven times. She had a grasp of faith when she thought she couldn't do it. Suddenly she knew she could do it. Faith. The gift of faith. God's faith. Beyond you. Beyond your measure of faith. God's faith. Every good and perfect gift comes down from above, from the Father of lights, in whom there's no fair one or any shadow of turning here tonight. Here comes God's faith. It's a gift. Now you've had everything but tongues and interpretation. Which is the only two gifts that most Pentecostals believe in. 
Hallelujah. Now, all of that happened in old Sister Jones's hypothetical case. No, I thought the preacher had the gift of faith. Hey, you must understand that although a gift might be in a man, the man is also in the gift. As God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, Christ was also in God. You that missed it, I'll try to put it down in simple terms so your mind can comprehend. The fish is in the ocean, and when he got thirsty and took a big drink, the ocean was in the fish. Hello. You get it that time? I beg your pardon, but there's some water missing out of the ocean, Brother Freddy. I am a technical exactor and scribe. Uh, what's missing? The fish is... Stomach fall is missing, of course. Well, where do you think the fish is? He's in the ocean. Say amen. But what we're saying here is God is in Christ. Christ is in God after that fashion. God is Father and Spirit. Christ is body. He is the Son of the living God. He is the fullness of the Godhead, bodily the image of the great invisible God. Now, same way with the gift of the Spirit. Uh, you have a gift working in you. But then you're in the gift, for it is one spirit diversity of operation. It is only an extension of the baptism of the Holy Ghost that you already have. For you're filled with the Holy Ghost, these are resident there, and if you can only sit under a gift, you can reproduce the gift. Everything reproduces after its kind, and its seed is within itself. Oh, it's an extension. It's a, a new power level and a, a, a new uh, category of that one spirit in diversity of operation. Progression. Oh. Develop expansion. Something to do with your baptism besides sit there and be proud of yourself because you spoke in tongues 20 years ago. Say hallelujah. Oh, I love him, don't you? Now, when you get in the controls of a great jumbo jet with a thousand people behind you and you're about to crash land and you go paranoid, wish to God you'd learn how to fly this thing better than you did before they put you in the cockpit. Say amen. This thing is bigger than you. And when you get in something that fills the whole atmosphere and the whole environment is up above my head, there's music in the air and uh, everybody was in earshot and eyeshot is affected by this gift that's moving. You know that you couldn't possibly contain it in the six-foot frame of a man. It's in you, that's true, because you're at the control. I don't know what you're doing. We're going to have an awful lot of tragedies here. I said, anything bigger than you can knock you on your noggin. That's why you just don't grab a hold of this thing too quickly. It's a slow and orderly growth, and, and you have to adjust to it and push it to your perimeter. Don't step outside your boundary. Stay within your circle. Let God keep expanding your circle, stretching your abilities and your power levels that are added to you daily and constantly and uh, periodically so that you may stay alive to your growth and not die because of a lack of growth. See that? So it's a very precarious position that you're in. When you're operating in a gift and you have to know just what you're doing because uh, it's affecting a whole lot bigger area than just what spot you're taking up here on the planet. See that? Somebody said, I see that. Whew, I was hoping that somebody would. Hallelujah. I love him, don't you? Oh, thank you, Jesus, for the blood. Oh, with a God. If you could sit under healing, you'd reproduce healing. If you could sit under tongues, you could probably talk in tongues. <laughs> you know it's the truth. You can talk in tongues because you've been around Pentecost tongue talkers all your life. You know, hang ups over there. You got no mental block. You got nothing that keeps you from doing it. Well, you just think that's normal church. That's just ordinary worship. Hey, uh, that's what it's supposed to be. I, I don't even question that. That's uh, just childlike faith. Why don't you heal the sick? That's Pentecost, too. That's apostolic, too. Why don't you heal the sick? Because you haven't sit around healing, haven't sit under healing, haven't seen healing, haven't been near healing. You cannot reproduce it without a seed. It fathers you, mother. As a gift begins to operate, which is bigger than you and I, it drops a seed in your spirit, and you're impregnated by it. And now, you feel it growing in you. One, you might have sat there for six months, six years, and never received a thing. You were barren. You were unfruitful, because you're not partaker of the divine nature. 
say hallelujah. Well, you might just sit there six minutes. And your timing was right on. You were now fertile. You were hungry. You were open. You were receptive. You were ready. Timing is the key to every supernatural event. Boy, the seed is sown. I feel an embryo for me. Nine months later, more or less, depending upon the spiritual progress of people, you will groan and you will travail and agonize and you will die a thousand deaths, but you will bring into the world new life and a gift of the Spirit, and society will see your brand new gift. It's just a little baby, yeah, yowling and squalling and carrying on. And you don't expect that little baby to raise 13 corpses in his first year. Say hallelujah. It ain't a big thing, but it's growing. But at least it's alive, and it's moving, and now chronologically, according to its age, as it exercises, and as it's fed, and as it matures, and as it grows, it takes on more capability, and it can do more and more the older it gets, and you don't expect out of a child what you expect out of an adolescent. You don't expect out of a teenager what you expect out of an adult. Oh, the slow and orderly growth of the kingdom of God, the blade, the ear, the full cord in the ear, Paul, planting the power swatting, and God giving the increase here tonight. A tub of Glory to God. While your little old child, your gift, the gift is a child, while it's growing and adding year to year to year, while it's maturing and growing up, make sure you add to its faith, virtue. Make sure you add to its virtue, knowledge. Make sure you add to its knowledge, temperance. And to its temperance, patience. That's where I think we'll be left off. Someone said, I'm praying for patience. Well, you'll get tribulation. Be careful how you pray. I don't have time to, to, to be prolong this much longer tonight. But you do need patience. You need to wait, I say, upon the Lord. They, they wait on the Lord. We knew this thing. And not up of a wing is of an eagle. They run and not be weary. They walk and they are not faint. And teach me, Lord, to wait. Don't say, God, I've got two minutes. Can you bless me in two minutes? They say, nope. Wait on me. The longer you wait, the stronger you get. They that wait upon the Lord, we knew this thing. If you're wiped out tonight and exhausted, just wait in his presence. It is impossible for you uh, not to wait here and not to receive new strength. The longer you wait, the stronger you'll get tonight. That's the word of God. That's truth. Wait, I say upon the Lord. Uh, add to your patience godliness. How many want to be more like God? If you really want to be like God, get the gifts of the Spirit in you. That's how God likes to move. That's God moving through you. Someone said, well, I've got God. Prove it. I've got faith. James said, show me your faith and I'll show you my faith by my work. Believers, people of faith, they do things. We've got all kinds of high and 57 varieties of Pentecostalism today. And charismatics went on down to the Jews of Pentecost. Spiritual Judaizers. One extreme to the other. Hallelujah. They'll tell you, I'm a believer. Oh, you are? I say prove it. Hallelujah. What do you mean you're a believer? Well, I, I'm a, what, I, what they're really saying is I'm a subscriber and I'm an adherent. I'm in agreement with what's going on. I'm not opposed to it. Well, I'll give them a, 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 the full benefit of the doubt. They, as a believer, believe that they're in church and the pew is holding them up about all they're believing for, is that the, the people is holding them up. What am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to say that believers do things. Don't come in here and tell me you're a believer and that's all you've ever done. Well, I accept the Lord. I believe upon him. That's good. But if you ever stop there, you'll soon be twice dead and plucked up by the roots before you realize. The Bible said repent and believe the gospel. Now, first of all, believers repent. Let me throw a few more scriptures at you here and I'll be done. What does the Bible say? He that believeth and is baptized. We find that believers get baptized. Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believe? Among you believers, believers do things with their belief. Hallelujah. Trying to show James your faith without your works, it's impossible. Was faith has to come first. And you add to it virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, and godliness. 
Those are the works. Works of godly works have got to come in here. Hallelujah to God. Now he, that believer, has something else going in his favor. These signs shall follow them that believe. All right? <laughs> now concerning spiritual gifts, brother, I'd not have you ignorant. Now we find out in that one verse of scripture who it is that's ignorant of spiritual gifts. The brethren. Isn't that a shame? And if the brethren are ignorant, how do we expect the poor uh, laity or the congregation to know anything about it? Say hallelujah. You cannot rise higher than leadership. Therefore, we must know something in leadership about spiritual gifts. Or we're going to throw the baby out with the bathwater every time somebody tries to get up and obey God do something because we we not know what's going on. we will be scared of it. we be afraid they're going to be overly spiritual, which means they're out-spiritualizing you. Say hallelujah. Let's face these things as they really are. How many love truth that will set you free? All truth in the inner man. Hallelujah to God. If the brethren know something about spiritual gifts and are not ignorant of spiritual gifts, and when it gets starts operating here, 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 they can guide it, screen it, balance it, and channel it, and cause it to be a, a promotion and a, a edification instead of a detriment and a hindrance. Hallelujah, that's all. So add on to your patience godliness. All oh, believers do things. Everybody say believers do things. And add to your godliness brotherly kindness. Now, I know it's, you need to be kind. Kindness, uh, to be, being kind is just a step ahead of love. I mean, a step in front of or before love. It's not quite love, but it's at least being kind. We're almost there. Everybody say, we're almost there. Hallelujah. Brotherly kindness. Hmm. Well, kindness is at least better than lust. We've had a long journey trying to get rid of all this lust. We've almost attained love. Oh, thank God for the additional table. If you do these things, Peter said, he will never fall. We're tired and sick and tired of seeing people falling. I've got an additional table here that'll keep you from never falling. You'll never fall according to what Peter said, and I believe him. Hallelujah. But you must abide by the additional table. Brotherly kindness. Now, it's one thing to be kind, but it's a different thing to be kind in a brotherly fashion. Brothers are something that sticks close. They might fight. They might hate each other sometimes. Brothers are born for adversity, the scripture said. A brother is born for adversity. But when it comes time to pick on either brother, the brothers will stand for each other. And everyone else, if they don't say what they say to each other, but don't you let nobody else say nothing about them. They'll jump up because they're brotherly in their kindness. Blood is thicker than water. It's a family tie. That's why the scripture said, when your mama and your daddy forsake you, the Lord will take you up. And he that would have friends by showing himself friendly, and there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother, and it's pretty hard to stick closer than a brother under adversity. All right. Why don't you treat your fellow as your brother, your real flesh and blood, family tie brother. You don't have to worry about lusting against him. You won't have to worry about lust, because you see, if we're going to take it out on anybody, you're going to take it out on everybody except your own, your own brother. You treat anybody like a real brother, do not try to take advantage of him. Do not try to uh, stab him in the back. Do not try to uh, run over him roughshod. Do not try to rip him off. Do not try to gratify yourself and your own will against them. You will not take from them. You might take from others to give to them, but you will not hurt them if it is in the family. And you're by one spirit baptized into one body tonight, putting you all in the same family, and it's time to add unto godliness brotherly kindness. You can get kindness going in a brotherly fashion. It won't be no time now that you have the charity that is the final analysis of the additional table. Finally, add to brotherly kindness, charity, which is love. Oh, go ahead and love Jesus with me one time, and you will find that you have escaped the corruption of this world tonight, which is in this world because of lust. You have found a way out through the maze, through the trap. You've escaped. You're a clean escape tonight because you've arrived at loving Jesus. Hallelujah. Loving your brother, which is the same as loving Jesus, inasmuch as you did it to the least of these, my brethren, you did it unto me, Jesus said. 
Oh, when was you sick and when was you hungry and when was you naked? When you did it to one of your brothers, Jesus said, you did it all to me. Hallelujah. Oh, thank God. Verse 8 said, if these things are in you. How many wants them in you? Oh, glory to God. If they are found within you, thank God. You'll never be bad. You'll never be all too good. You will always have knowledge and revelation of Jesus Christ. It will always be there. And if they're not in you, said the next verse, you're a blind bat. If they're not in you, you can't even see afar off. You can't even see close up. You can't see, period. I believe we need to see in the other world. Let, not just in this world, but in the other world. We've got to be able to see. We've got to be seers. We've got to have revelation. So we've got to have this additional table added to ourselves periodically that we might grow and not die. Periodic growth. And if it's in you, fine. If it's not in you, terrible. Chase it. Pursue it. So forth. If ye do these things, you'll never fall. So I plan on doing something that's going to keep my feet solidified so I'm not a slip fall. And if you never fall, then you're going to have an abundant entry into the kingdom of heaven. Most of you people, a lot of people have been paranoid, condemned, frustrated, worried. Some days you're saved, some days you're not. Some days you know everything's right and everything's wrong. Some of you backslide every time you stub your toe. Some of you condemn yourself. It's not enough for the devil to condemn you. You condemn yourself. Hallelujah. You know you're going to have an abundant entry into the kingdom? You that's worried about missing heaven every four or five days. Do these things and you'll never fall. You'll never miss heaven. Heaven is going to be your portion because if you don't fall, you're automatically going to heaven if you don't fall. Hallelujah. We have a guarantee for you tonight. Just to, all you got to do is be able to add. And you will be able to never fall and never worry about missing heaven because heaven will be your home. You prepared yourself for that direction. Oh, glory. i, I got to quit. I'm not done, but I'm quitting. I'm sorry I preached so long. I don't even know if I preached so long. I've been in the spirit. There's no time in the spirit world. I've been to meetings where the preacher preached 12 minutes and I thought eternity had set in. You've been there too. But tonight, we've been in the spirit. Great things have happened on to us tonight. It seemed like we just arrived. And if I have preached for too long for some of you folks that are sitting here in the flesh, I have a good excuse for you. You needed it. Hallelujah. Put up your hand and rejoice over the additional table that will make you to never to fall. Hallelujah. Oh, my. Didn't it rain? Oh, I thank you, Jesus. Everybody said it's real. Are you happy? Oh, glory to God. All right, we're going to pray the first prayer of faith tonight at this time and at this point and moment. We're praying for souls. We're praying for the inner man of all you people who even claim to be saved for 100 years that uh, feel like you need no more suddenly have realized you need some more. You that's been in danger of falling. You that's almost slipped already. You that's having a struggle instead of flow. You that's having a problem walking on the water. You're sinking in the waves. You that are just sure that the temptation if it comes against you again tomorrow it's going to get you. You may have whipped it to now but you're in danger of falling. I promise you an additional table by which you will never fall. You will never fall. You will never miss heaven or, or, or fail to make heaven if you do these things that was preached on tonight. This is an exceeding promise. It's a great promise. It's a precious promise. It's beyond your comprehension up until this sermon to know that this could happen to you. But now you've heard it and you know it can happen to you. Hallelujah. I say anybody tonight that needs faith, anybody that needs virtue, anybody that needs knowledge, anyone needing temperance, anyone needing patience, or anyone needing brotherly kindness, anyone needing godliness, anybody needing charity, which is love, or anyone needing all of the above, you plan on not following tomorrow, and you need any or all, you better get your soul on its feet right now and receive it, so you'll never slip again, hallelujah, Ukarala Get your hands up quick and grab it.
grab every one of them that you need. Call them out to God. Name them, decree them, ask God for them, and here they come directly down from that glory world, straight over the counter from heaven's parents' house. He is sending upon you more faith, more virtue, more knowledge, more temperance, oh, more patience, more godliness, more brotherly kindness, and more charity. You've made it. You've made it out of lust. You've entered into love. You've escaped the lust of this world. And now you're entering into the love of God that pass of all understanding that's still in your heart and mind tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, for the contrary opposite from lust to love is 180 degrees upon the cycle. Thank God you're in the new direction now. Going upwards, straight and narrow. Hallelujah to God. Rejoice in your soul for what God has added to your very being this evening. Glory be to Jesus that the hallelujahs roll. Glory be to Jesus. Wonderful, wonderful. Glory, glory. Oh, thank God of living life. Glory, glory. Oh, Rabbi Man, Sakhali, Bandri, Mon, Shuri, Alamatri, and Rosso, Koyande. Glory to God tonight. He ever liveth to make an accession. Praising, praising, praising. Go ahead and rejoice and be glad. Rejoice and be glad. Hallelujah be to God. Rabban Sakhali, Alamatri. Glory, Alamatri, Bandri, Baho, Sukumandra. Glory, glory, glory. Wonderful God, wonderful God. I praise thee, O Lord, for what you have done, even for these souls and what you've added to them. Thank God they're growing and they're not dying now. You don't grow, you die. But you had to grow tonight because God added something to you when you stood. Hallelujah. Oh, thank God. I'm glad he's adding something to me. Praising my Savior all the day long. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus at the hallelujah's roll. Rejoice for a few more seconds while the order of the service is changing to a higher level yet where God confirms his word supernaturally. Hallelujah. It could have happened at the beginning or in the middle, but tonight is happening in the conclusion, but don't worry about it. It's in the perfect timing. That's how God wants it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Wondrous, wondrous Savior. Glory to God in the highest. I love him. I rejoice in him, praising God of life. Hallelujah to God. Why didn't it rain? Hallelujah. Are you feeling the power of the demonstration? Has it been tremendous up to now? There is more, and yet there is room. <laughs> I like that verse, and yet there's room. There's room for more of God tonight in your life. There's time for more of his grand workings here in the meeting. Hallelujah to God. Wonderful Jesus. Wave your hand in glorious, victorious victory. Glory to God. Thanking God. Thanking God. Oh, wonderful, wonderful Savior. Glory to God forevermore, Lord. I love thee. How many can raise your right hand and say, I've been prayed for in the last two nights of this meeting, one night or the other. I, I, I had prayer. I, I was prayed for. If you've been prayed for last night or the night before, hold your hand up. Glory to God. How many received something when you was prayed for? Keep your hand up if you did. Drop it if you didn't. How many still got it after one or two days? You still have it. Keep your hand up. If you lost it, you can drop your hand. But if you still got it, keep your hand up. Oh, that's glorious. Hallelujah to God. Wonderful Jesus. Oh, well. I only wanted to do that to show the congregation that when you get your miracle tonight, it shall be permanent also. Hallelujah. I'm going to say, what are you doing right now, Brother Freddie? I'm just waiting on God for the green light to come on and the level of the service to rise one more degree and the order of the service to change into what God is trying to do now. 
Hallelujah. Who are the band sister of a hotly and share? I love him. I praise him. Oh, we be to God. Who are the bubble who share? Thank God, thank God. Can I step in there just one moment? I see a sister. And I'm going to pray for first tonight. And it's you. I'm going to ask God to touch you tonight in your body. Turn about. Come and follow me. Go with the God. Your step of faith that you have taken has now allowed you to receive healing. You've been healed before. God's touched you before. But you need another physical touch tonight. You've had recent stress in your back. That's true. Follow me. It's gone. You're healed in your back. Take another step of faith and check your back. Where's the pain and stress of your back? Not here. Not in your back. Keep your hands up, there's more for you. You have suffered off and on with your leg. With your leg. Almost like leg weights. Throbbing leg weights. If the weather changes or it's cold or damp, you can usually tell what the weather's going to be by what you feel in your leg. You have used your legs for barometers. How is it? Those are your barometers. For healing. Take another step of faith. For a long time, you have suffered uh, a, with a condition in your neck that came from a jerky. A long time ago, it's like a whiplash that you received. And it has uh, caused you suffering to this area of your neck. Is that true? Yes. Mm-hmm. This goes back for years. But tonight's tense tension and uh, suffering will leave immediately as a sign that you'll never be bothered by this again. What? It did. Oh, wonderful. That saves me a prayer. Now, suddenly, my little sister, your whole life is unfolding here like a book. Shall we read the book? Well, God wishes to tell you more. One is concerning the physical sinus condition of your head. Would you say good and loud now? I just went to the doctor's last Friday because I had a bad sinus infection. Well, what did he do for you? Any medicine? Kind of faced you out a little bit, did it? Never got rid of the sinus, just doped her up a little. Doctors are professionals at making uh, legal dope addicts out of you. But you're all right. You have prescriptions there. I've told people to go to church and pop seven pills before they go to church and get out and testify. Uh, Preacher, uh, let's pray for all the drug addicts in Columbus. All that medication and drugs can do for you is dope up the pain, but you've still got the pain. The doctor didn't take the pain. He covered it over. God is sick of covering things up. Say hallelujah. Oh, you believe your sinus is being healed too? Yeah. You're right. Now you also have a little bit of fear of the doctor in the hospital. Now, the next time that you go, you will not be afraid. and You'll be as calm as a cucumber. And you will have no complication. There's the words over your head. No complication. No complication. No complication. Is she happy? Mm-hmm. You know what that's all about. Mm-hmm. Take another step of faith. Now God is dealing beyond your physical. He's dealing with your spiritual life now. You're going to receive convictions. New convictions by the Spirit. You're going to feel convicted of things. God's going to speak to your heart, and you're not going to obey man, but you're going to obey the Spirit of God and things that God will now require of you as a separate person from the world. Understand that? Yes. 
been dealing with you about these things for the last two years. I told you the book was open here on her. Say amen. Somebody said, what is this going on here in this church? It's not but one of the nine gifts of the Spirit. Oh, the word of knowledge, a supernatural revelation of natural things from the physical world, past and present. Supernatural revelation of the future, of course, is prophecy. Ah, you have a little ministry that God is giving you. After tonight, you're going to enter into prayer, a prayer ministry, a new prayer ministry. And you'll be praying for friends of yours, mostly ladies, younger ladies, your peers in your age bracket. Can you handle that little ministry? And you will be Judy. Who's Judy? Me. You're Judy. Me. You're Judy. It looks to me like you're ordained to your new ministry by name, which means in this ministry that if God calls you to your ministry by name, you're ordained to it for life. You'll never escape it till you die. There's no sense you trying to uh, be delivered from it now. Oh, shut up! Pour all of the In the name of Jesus, heal Judy. Let her now be free. Use her mightily. Run, Sakala Bohusha. Help ourselves, thank God. It's getting real. Oh, hallelujah. My, didn't it rain? Hallelujah to the Lamb now. Woo! Kala Bohusha. Now, we took special pains to, to go at length into the case of our dear sister, Judy, whom I do not know, that she might learn what to expect when it comes your turn. We have not met before. Not met. You've been in the meeting someplace? Yes. Uh, we have placed you somewhere, but of course I cannot remember who you are. <laughs> oh, I love it. Now, the abortionists, they wouldn't like to hear that. These, uh, uh, this crowd that has got you brainwashed into thinking that you shouldn't have children. Mm. So when you're old and sitting in a old age home and no kids to take care of you and you fall out of your chair and lay there all day before some old fool person decides to pick you up. Are you hearing me now? I said, God ordained for you to have children. I want to tell you this. I have to tell you the truth. One of the perimeters of this ministry includes, within the perimeter of this ministry, uh, God has given us the grace and the power to pray for the barren womb and God to bring her to life with childbearing. I don't know. Maybe one night I'm going to pray for that here. All you women that can't have babies may start having babies. Abraham prayed for Abimelech and all his house and all his servants. And he prayed one prayer and, and all his cattle. Every one of them started having offspring. They all started bearing. Say hallelujah. Say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Pray. Every church I go to, I go back to, someone comes up and says, you know, I could never uh, get pregnant. I could never have a child. And now I'm going to have a child. Hallelujah. Or they come up and pass the baby and say, take this baby and pray over it and bless it. And, uh, let the blessing of God be upon it because I never could have that baby before. Say, so, amen. Right, you're glad about this, huh? Yeah. Now listen, I don't have a clue who you are. I wouldn't have known you from Adam's house cat. That's right. God has healed you. He's opened up your ministry. He's called your name that you might do that ministry. He's promised you no complication when you go to the hospital. And you who are barren have now become fruitful because God.